I felt the call to, um, to ordination and so started training in 2001. And I was quite surprised um, that going into another major institution of this country, the church, I found similar levels of stereotyping and racialization of black people in those institutions as well, and, and experienced um, certain amounts of prejudice um, throughout, my, um, throughout my training, and then recognized that um, not only in the training institutions and the people attending, but also in parish life and diocesan structures, um, there were um, high levels of uh, racialized attitudes towards people of color, which often meant that people were not brought forward for or accepted for training as um, stipendiary, that's full-time um, ministers, and often not as leaders of the Anglican church as well. Um, so my primary um, involvement in racial justice comes out of my own spiritual journey of seeing my own caste privilege and uh, prejudice, etc., from a Hindu background, rejecting that, becoming an atheist, and then coming to Christ at university. And I think I was rather rudely shocked to find uh, racism within within the church, uh, which I, which I didn't expect to to, to encounter. Uh, my primary area of racial justice work was with the London Baptist Association from two thousand and three to 2018. And uh, as Baptists, uh, we pride ourselves on being people of the word. And um, one of the things that I encountered uh, for, after my appointment was racial justice work uh, takes away time, effort, and resources from the work of mission and evangelism. Uh, and uh, that this is a waste of time, this is a social gospel agenda, that we shouldn't touch it as evangelicals, was the kind of sentiment that I would, I would hear. And, and my thinking was very much, well, that doesn't fly with my Hindu family and community who say, your church is riddled with caste and race prejudice. Who are you to say anything about Christ to us? You don't have a leg to stand on. And uh, that, if you like, prompted me to say, well, what are the scriptural foundations? If we say we stand on scripture, what are the scriptural foundations to actually address these matters? So I developed courses on how and why we should talk about racial justice, why it's important to do so, why you can't actually preach a gospel of reconciliation if you don't practice it, because as the Lord often, you know, pointed out to the Pharisees, they were hypocrites, and that's what the world looks at us and says, you're a bunch of hypocrites. You preach this, but you don't practice it. And so it was really developing courses and so on to do that. The, the, remember those hate, you know, days of the 80s of what was called the riots, it, young people in the streets um, agitating for justice. I remember three days and three nights being in the streets of uh, Handsworth um, and being there and running at the police um, alongside young people. I mean, I didn't carry anything in my hands, but I was with the young people who were about my age in their middle twenties and just feeling the intense anger uh, in young people at the way police were harassing them uh, and, and treating them and the, the violence and the racism of police. That's nothing new, that issue which is um, being talked about now, it's been there. Back in the early 80s, a young man called Clinton McCurbin was killed while he was being arrested by a policeman in Wolverhampton, you know, the George Floyd uh, of our times, all those years ago, and organizing a massive march against police violence and racism in Wolverhampton. Um, and it didn't catch much attention, but we were there, and uh, the issues which are before us are not new, and it, as it's been said, uh, they're not going to go away. Racism is like COVID. It's there, and it impacts everyone, and we're going to have to deal with it all through our lives, and people who follow us will be having to do exactly the same. I'm not convinced. Richard, that it has really been on the agenda of the church, mm -hmm. if I'm honest with you. I think 
issues around multiculturalism and inclusivity and diversity have been, but I think there are huge theological differences between those things and racial justice. I think the thing about racial justice is that it calls for and demands radical change from within, um, which impacts the external. Um, uh, that is a huge internal paradigm shift which white people need to participate in. And so I think many of them have been reluctant to actually engage racial justice because of the, the sacrifice it, it, it demands um, for racial justice to become a reality in the space that they navigate. The answer is not Anglican. The answer is just the fact that structural racism continues to keep power in the hands of those who are white, male, and rich. And it means that and class and gender and ethnicity continues to push people and oppress people. Black people are still viewed through the lens of slavery or, or imperialism or, and their disempowerment continues through language, through culture, uh, and, and the and, and uh, an understanding that we're not as civilized still as others who seem to have felt that they had a task to civilize us. So racism continues, Indigit has said it, others have said it, we, we need to continue to, to um, fight against the structures which work to oppress people and they will use whatever means to oppress and ethnicity is, is a wonderful trope to use to push down a whole people and it happens worldwide.